There are times when people would like to switch their Medicare plans, and sometimes it's in their best interest to do so, but other times they could be making a huge mistake. And so in this video, I'm going to show you the five common mistakes that you must be aware of before switching a Medicare plan. Now, the first mistake happens oftentimes when people are switching from Advantage plans to another Advantage plan. Now, remember, there's just a couple times a year in which you can actually switch Advantage to Advantage. So, uh, remember, Advantage plans are also called C plans or replacement plans. And so, C plans can be switched between October 15th and December 7th of every year. We call this the annual election period or annual enrollment period, right? So anytime that we do a switch during these seven weeks, the policy that you switch to uh, goes into effect January 1 of the following year, all right? So you have to switch within the time frame. The second time frame you have to switch these C plans would be uh, January 1 to March 31st. So we have the three months. So as long as we are on an Advantage plan, effective January 1, we can switch. So if I make the switch to a different Advantage plan, January, they'll start me in February. If I make the switch in February, they'll start me in March on the new plan. March, they'll start me in April, the new plan. So we have these three months at the first of the year and then seven weeks towards the end of the year. So you've got to make these switches within this time frame. Now, the very common mistake that people make here is they will have an agent uh, reach out to them and they will um, uh, uh, talk talk to them about typically some kind of a perk within the Advantage plan. And so let's say you're on Advantage plan and they give you $1,000 of dental allowance. And that means that you can get cleanings, uh, x-rays, uh, maybe filling, extraction, whatever, up to $1,000. So then an agent will call you and the agent will talk to you and say, hey, we have this dental benefit that is actually $3,000 a year. Uh, and they focus in on that perk, or uh, you may be on a plan that uh, has a hearing aid benefit that you have to have, a, you have a copay of $1,250 per, per ear uh, for your hearing aids, and a new plan over here has this hearing aid benefit that maybe has a copay of $500. So agents are very guilty of this as they will focus on maybe a perk or two that will be different than the plan that you're in. And so sometimes people are, are open to switch to pick up these additional perks. So the mistake is when you focus on that perk alone and you don't dig into other details of the plan because the plan you're on right now uh, you could have lower copay so the new plan uh, though it may give you a little more dental benefit or maybe a little bit better hearing aid benefit it may cost you $50 to see a specialist instead of 25 like your old plan or the new plan uh, that they're encouraging you to switch to because these additional perks may have a max out of pocket of 5,000 and your other plan may have a max out of pocket of 3,000 uh, it could be that your doctor is not in the network and so the point is you have to look at all the details. Don't just focus on the perks that the agents are trying to advertise and promote to try to encourage you to switch because there's more to a plan than just a couple perks in the plan. All right, so you have to be aware of that. So it's a very, very common mistake because agents are going to do everything they can during these dates to try to get you dissatisfied with the plan you're on and put you on a new plan. Now, it may be in your best interest to make that switch. I am just saying to you, don't make that switch uh, because an agent is focused on one or two perks that may be uh, a little bit better in your plan, look at the whole of the plan, uh, the network, uh, the co-pays, the max out of pocket, and all those details before you make that switch. Hey, just real quickly, if you're finding this video to be helpful, you can like, comment, and subscribe. And if you do so, that'll let YouTube know that this is helpful information and they'll send it out to others who also need to learn about Medicare. Now, the second most common mistake that we see people make is whenever they're trying to switch from Advantage to a supplemental plan. Again, let's talk about the time frame. We can only make this kind of a switch same dates that we talked about before, October 15th to December 7th. That's the annual enrollment period. And if someone makes a switch during this time uh, and to a supplemental plan, if they're able to do that, that supplemental plan then would go into effect January 1. That Advantage plan is yours until uh, December 31st. So if we make the switch here, we go into effect here. And then same thing applies as earlier, uh, January 1 uh, all the way to March 31st. As long as I have an Advantage plan on January 1, I can make the switch to a supplemental plan. Uh, and if I do it in January, uh, my sup can start in February. If I make the switch in February, my supplemental plan will start in March. Make the switch in March, will start in April. All right, so we, we're, we're uh, restricted to these time frames. So if I want to do that any months beyond this, I cannot do it. It's just impossible. So we've got to live within the time frame. But really, the biggest mistake that people make at this point in time is not realizing that if they want to get off the advantage into the supplemental plan, if they have 
have been on that advantage plan for any length of time, year, two, three, four, five years, whatever, uh, what's going to happen is for them to make this switch. Now uh, they're going to have to go through medical underwriting. Okay. And so now there are some exceptions and that would be this New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Maine. Uh, these states will allow you uh, to get off of an Advantage plan and uh, move to a supplemental plan. And they vary when you can do that, but you can still do that. Uh, and you could uh, pick up a supplemental plan uh, with no underwriting. All right. And so but again, there are some restrictions as far as timing of this, but there would be no underwriting. So in all the other 46 states, 46 states, if you're trying to make this switch, what you have to realize, again, if you've been on this for any length of time now, we have to go through medical underwriting. And people think just because Medicare has this open enrollment, they can switch when they want as though there's no rules. And that's just not true. And so what we have here is medical underwriting. I want to make uh, you aware of this uh, because a lot of folks don't know this. So if I'm in a state other than those four states and I want to move, now what happens? We're going to ask you about probably 25 to 30 health questions. Uh, we're also going to check all your medications, whatever you're taking now or have taken in the last 24 months, and uh, probably need some kind of a statement from your doctor calling an attending physician statement. So we're going to gather this information, that information that is given to the supplemental company. And so they have the right in these 46 states, if they have some, they see something in your medical records or a health issue that you have that they don't uh, want to take on the risk of that, they actually can deny you coverage coverage okay and a lot of people make the mistake thinking they can do it uh, uh, just because they would like to and that's not the way it's going to work so I got a certain time frame to do it but the biggest thing is you're going to have to go through medical underwriting and so that uh, company uh, if they see a, a prescription or an issue going on with your health they say no we're not going to do that and folks uh, health issues are, are they don't have to be life or death uh, if you have rheumatoid arthritis uh, you're probably not going to make that switch if you have spinal stenosis you're not going to uh, any kind of a serious neurological issue, you're not going to make the switch. Insulin dependent diabetics today, if you take more than 50 units of insulin or if you've had any diabetic complications such as neuropathy or retinopathy, uh, certainly an amputation because of uh, diabetes, you're not going to be able to make the switch. So they're going to ask you a series of questions. For men, they'll ask you about your PSA levels. Uh, so there's things that, that they can do uh, uh, to deny you things they're just not comfortable with. And so you have to be aware of that. Um, uh, if you have AFib, uh, one AFib incident in your medical records today, there's no way you're going to be able to make that switch. That's a declinable event. If you've been advised to have some kind of a surgery in the, in the future, maybe a knee or hip replacement, even um, uh, a cataract surgery, uh, they're going to deny you because of that. So they're going to look at health. They're also going to look at prescriptions. Uh, right now, if someone's taking tramadol, uh, there's no company that's going to take you. You have some kind of a chronic pain that they're uncomfortable with, and they're just simply not going to approve that case. So you have to be aware uh, that you may have to go through medical underwriting. Now, there is a time which you don't have to go through medical underwriting, and that is when you first start Medicare. So let's say that I'm going to go on Medicare. Let's just take, take the here just in a couple days. We'll be May 1 of 2023. And let's say that's when you start your Medicare, A and B. So the key to this is understanding that this B date uh, gives you a window of opportunity to get any Medigap policy in any state, any, any company that you want to choose, and you actually can actually apply for that Medigap policy six months before you start Medicare and then up to six months after. So we have this, this window. But once I've started my B date, if I don't have a med sub plan, I still have six more months where no underwriting was required. But if I wait beyond that six months, again, in 46 of these states, what happens now, uh, now you're going to have to uh, medically qualify. So in this example, you would have uh, six months before May to get the policy or uh, May, June, July, August, September, October. And so in my example, from November 1 on, in 46 of the 50 states, in order for you to get that Medicare supplemental plan now, you're going to have to medically qualify. All right. And so keep in mind. So if you're on an advantage, been uh, on it for a while, you're going to have to also medically qualify to do that. So don't make that mistake and don't be caught by surprise. If you have a health issue that you're uh, you're experiencing right now and you want to get off the advantage plan, that supplemental plan is probably not going to take you. All right. The third very common mistake is when people have chosen a supplemental plan and now they want to go to an Advantage plan. And typically the reason people do this is because they're tired of paying the premium for the supplemental plan and they've seen the advertisements that talk about zero premium to the Advantage plan and then they hear about all the perks 
that are offered by the Advantage plan that were not offered by their supplemental plan. And so the mistake that people make is, is believing that if they make this switch, it's going to be very similar in coverage, and it's not going to be, okay? In other words, if we just focus on the zero premium and just the perks, we're, we're going to miss some of the details of the coverage because when you make this switch, uh, they're going to be drastically different. In fact, the only two things that a supplemental plan has and the, the, the Advantage plan has is that you have to pay Medicare. I'm shooting this vid video today. It's uh, April of 2023. And right now, the Part B premium is $164.90 a month. Now, if you're single and above $97,000 or a married couple above $194,000, you pay more than that. But everyone else, about 93% of the population, you pay $164.90 for your Medicare Part B. And so my point is, if you have a supplemental plan, you're doing that. If you have an Advantage plan, you're doing that. So regardless, we're going to pay uh, uh, Medicare Part B premium, either system that we use. So when people are on this and they go to this, what they're often disappointed about is this. Over here, when you take that Advantage plan, that Advantage plan is going to have networks of doctors. You're going to have HMOs and you're going to have PPOs. Right. And so that's different because over here on a supplemental plan, you can go to any provider you want to that takes Medicare. As long as they take Medicare, you can go there because they will take your supplemental plan. And so that's almost unlimited. And again, not everyone takes Medicare, but most do over here. It's going to be limited. Uh, some doctors will take uh, the HMO and PPO. Some will take the HMO, but the PPO, and then many of them will take none of them. They're just not going to. Same thing with hospitals. So they're not required to take uh, the Advantage plan. So a lot of people that make the switch are shocked when they find out they're going to have a limited amount of providers on those Advantage plans. The second big shocker is this. What happens is um, uh, with every Advantage plan, you have what's called pre-authorizations. Now, when you're in the supplemental plans, you have no pre-authorizations, but over here, they say right now that about 72% of the services require pre-authorization, okay? And that just simply means that you need an MRI or a CAT scan or uh, maybe a knee surgery or a hip replacement, but a shoulder surgery. You need something health-wise, and it's uh, more on the expensive side. Uh, anything above a doctor visit or specialist visit or general labs, you're going to have to get that pre-approved. So the doctor says you need a, a full hip replacement or knee replacement, uh, but just because doc says you need it doesn't mean you're going to get it because that request is going to have to go to the Advantage company, and they have the right to agree with that or the right to deny it. And sometimes they will immediately approve uh, what the doctor is suggesting. But I've seen scores of times where the doctor said, uh, this is what you need, and the Advantage plan did not agree. Uh, we had one recently, a knee replacement. Lady needed a new, a new knee, and the Advantage plan said, no, we want you to try uh, steroid shots for a while. Then after that, we want to try therapy, and then we'll revisit the possibility of a knee replacement. And so that's the, what she had to go through to be able to see if she can even get a knee replacement. So the point is, in Advantage plans, your doctor does not have the final say-so. It is the Advantage company that holds the power to that. And again, sometimes they'll approve things quickly. Other times they're delayed and sometimes they're just flat denied. And so over in this system, you would never have that. Uh, the company that wrote your supplemental plan has no say so whatsoever. If Medicare pays, they have to pay. Medicare doesn't pay, they won't, but as long as Medicare pays and your doctor says you need it, that's the end of the story. We have no pre-authorizations, okay? And so when people make the switch, uh, they're surprised by that. And another thing is when someone has this plan over here, what happens is there is very little risk, <laughs> very little risk. Well, why is that? Well, because you paid a premium and you've been paying that premium but what happens beyond that premium, uh, most people, they are getting a plan G. And so what do you pay once a year? Your Medicare B deductible. <laughs> this year, that's $226. You paid that premium to get rid of all the risk. When over here, now you're taking on the risk because now you have co-pays. You have co-insurance. Okay? And if you get sick, you'll probably max out of pocket, which is anywhere from about $3,000 to $10,000 uh, a year. So if you get cancer, uh, you're going to max out. Over here, you paid a premium, usually $125 a month or so, uh, and uh, that's, that's the limit other than your B deductible. So they don't realize that over here, yes, I've got a zero premium and a few little perks. I can go to the gym for free and uh, have a small dental allowance, uh, but I'm still going to pay, but I pay as I go. So you're taking on the risk of whatever health issue 
issues may be in your future. And remember what I taught you earlier, if you stay on that advantage plan a year, two, three, four, five years, want to get off of it now, you got to medically qualify to get back over into the system. And so the point is when people don't realize what they're really getting with the advantage plan, because again, this is what the agents want to talk about. Zero premium and all little perks that they throw in. They don't want to talk about the fact that you may or may not get that hip replacement <laughs> and you may or may not be able to have uh, see the doctor that you would like to see or the oncologist you want to see and certainly you're going to be out of pocket more if you get sick you'll spend more on that advantage plan than you ever would on the supplemental plan so don't make that mistake the fourth major mistake that people make has to do with drug plans now remember whenever someone uh, is enrolled in medicare a and b and they get a supplemental plan supplemental plan they then have an additional prescription drug plan. We call these Part D plans, okay? So they get to add that. They actually get to choose that, all right? Now, when someone decides that they're going to be a Medicare on a Medicare Advantage plan, that prescription drug is included in that. So the Advantage company actually picks that. And so the mistake here is on, on prescription drug plans is that Advantage plan has chosen the plan. You didn't pick it out. You chose your Advantage company. Uh, but they choose, they choose the kind of drug coverage, so you better make sure that your medications are covered well. I've seen people uh, take an advantage plan because they liked the zero premium, and all the money they saved in premium they spent to the pharmacy because they did not have good drug coverage embedded within it in the advantage plan. Okay, so be careful of that. Now, over on this side, if I have a standalone drug plan that I chose, uh, I can switch those plans. But the time you have to switch is October 15th through December 7th. So people sometimes make the mistake thinking they can switch a drug plan anytime that they want to, and that's not the case. It has to be within this period of time, and the new drug plan would go into effect January 1. Now, the good news is in switching drug plans, there's no underwriting. As long as that drug plan is in your zip code, you can get that drug plan. So don't worry about medical issues whatsoever. And then the other mistake that people make during this uh, period of time is they miss what is called their annual notice of change. So uh, it is April 2023 right now. And so what's going to happen uh, later this year, uh, right around the 15th of October, whatever drug plan you have, that standalone drug plan, they're going to mail you a packet of information called the ANOC, the annual notice of change. And the mistake that people make is they don't open up the ANOC. That ANOC is the company saying to you, uh, you're on a, a drug plan with us, this, and this, this drug plan lasts for a year, and then in the ANOC, they're going to disclose to you what they're going to be changing in the coming year. So uh, around October 15th, uh, people are going to get their ANOCs, and it's going to uh, disclose to them what 2024 plans are going to look like. And so what you're looking for, number one, is the premium changing. Usually it doesn't change. If it does, it changes slight, but every now and then we'll see a company triple uh, their premium. And people are caught off guard by that if they don't open up the ANOC to see what's going on with the premium. Also, we had to check the formulary. Are your medications still covered? If the plan is going to drop some medications, uh, they'll, they'll disclose that in the ANOC. Uh, and then also, you want to look for tiering changes. Every medication covered in a plan has a tier number, tier usually one, two, three, four, five. The lower the tier, the lower the copay. And I've seen times when a, a plan in one year uh, puts a medication at a tier two, and then the next year they bump it to a tier four, or it's a tier three, they bump to a tier five. And I've seen those tiering changes changes affect the co-payments, uh, sometimes $150, $175 every single month. And so if you didn't open up your ANOC to see what the plan is changing, what's going to happen, your plan will then automatically renew. <laughs> you didn't take the time to see if it's going to be a good plan for you for the coming year. And it may still be a great plan, but never assume because you like it this year, you're going to like it next year. That's a huge mistake because that plan has the right by the government to change anything they want to in the plan. Change the formulary, change the premium, change the tiering of the medication, and if you don't open up to find out what's happening, that plan automatically renews and starts January 1, and you go to the pharmacy in January or February to pick up your prescriptions, and all of a sudden you're paying full cost for a medication or it's not even covered any longer, you're going to be very disappointed by that. So my, my, my biggest piece of advice is this, open up the annual notice of change, see what they're doing. If you're happy with the plan, do nothing. It will automatically renew into the next year. But if we're dissatisfied with the plan, then we're back to the drawing board. If you're one of our clients, we facilitate that and give you some tools and resources and show you how to do that. But the point is you may need to switch the plan uh, so that you're going to be on the right plan for the coming year. So sometimes people uh, next year are going to be taking more meds or less meds, and so they may need to increase their coverage or decrease their coverage. So every year, October 15th to December 7th is your time to do it, but you want to make sure to pay attention to the ANOC so you know exactly what they're offering in that plan. Hey, if you're finding this video helpful, 
I want to invite you to go right up here and actually click on a link that will uh, allow you to watch what I call the Medicare Essentials Workshop. It's a workshop that I did that really is going to show you everything you need to know about Medicare uh, from A to Z, uh, how to enroll, when to enroll, and uh, the plan options for you. So, so go to that link and check it out. All right, then lastly, number five most common mistake is when people are switching uh, from supplemental plan to another supplemental plan. Either they're changing carriers or maybe even changing uh, supplemental plan types, uh, a different letter. And so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start by talking about what is very, very critical for those who begin Medicare. And then I think it'll make sense as we contemplate switching Medicare plans. So there's a very critical date for when you start Medicare. And let's suppose now, right now it's the end of April, 2023. And let's suppose that someone's going to start Medicare 5-1 um, uh, uh, 2023. And they could be doing this because they're turning 65 and uh, they're no longer working or their spouse isn't working, so we're going on Medicare. Now, keep in mind, sometimes people will enroll in A only and then work a couple more years and then they'll pick up B at a later date. So the whole key to this, though, is I'm trying to teach you about the importance of the Medicare B date. Because on the B date, what we have in regards to supplemental plans is we have what we call a Medigap uh, which is also a Medicare, of course, uh, supplemental plan, Medigap, uh, open enrollment period. And this is specifically tied to you and to your B date. Okay, this has nothing, has nothing to do with Medicare's open enrollment period. That's a whole other issue. This is your Medigap open enrollment period. So this has to do with getting supplemental plans. Now, most people today are getting a G plan uh, or maybe an N plan. Uh, there's a couple other plans, but most are getting a G or an N. I think most today still getting the G plan. It uh, gives the greatest amount of coverage. Uh, some people that have been on Medicare for a while have an F plan, which is full coverage, but that's not available today to anyone that is uh, born after January uh, 1, 1955, starting Medicare after January 1, 2020. Okay, so the F plans are primarily being phased out, but the G plan, M plan, top plans today. So when we buy a supplemental plan, here's the, 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 the key uh, issue with this Medigap open enrollment period is we can get any supplemental plan that we choose. Remember, there's 10 letters that we can uh, select from. Any carrier that offers those in our state, we can have those plans guaranteed issue, which means there's no underwriting required whatsoever. Uh, any pre-existing condition that you have, the insurance company has to take. Uh, so you will get that policy with no underwriting whatsoever. But that's a limited period of time. And that is tied to the B date. And it's actually six months. Okay, so in my example, my B date's 5-1-2023. I have six months where there's no underwriting. And this exists in every single state in the country has this. This is the federal guideline. So in this example, that would be all of May, all of June, July, August, September, October. So I have from 5-1 until October 31 where I would be in my Medigap six-month open enrollment period. All right, so the latest I could start... Um, uh, one of these supplemental plans in the open enrollment period, uh, I could enroll the last day of that six months and my, my coverage would go 11-1. But here's my point. After 11-1, 2023, in other words, after my six months is over, in most states, if I want to get a supplemental plan, now I have to medically qualify. Now, just from a practical standpoint, I want you to know, you don't have to wait until uh, your Medicare B date to, to set this up and to apply. Insurance companies will actually take your application six months prior to your B date with the effective date of the policy and the B date matching up, in my example, 5-1-2023. So I can apply six months before, but that six months after, once it's, it's over in most states, uh, now I have to medically qualify. Now, when I say most states, there is an exception. Let me, let me list those out for you. That would be New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Maine. Those are four states where uh, you never have to worry about uh, having to qualify after the six-month window because in those states, uh, you have other opportunities to uh, pick up a plan, switch a plan uh, outside of this period of time. In other words, they have a, a little um, a less strict rules uh, in those four states. But in all the other 46 states, if you want to buy a supplemental plan for the very first time, uh, they will make you go through underwriting if you didn't do it during this six-month window. Okay, if you do it during the six-month window, all states allow it. You'll get your policy guaranteed issue, no underwriting required whatsoever. All right, so those uh, is th that would be very important for those of you that are going to start Medicare. You've got to know that. Now, as we talk about switching plans, so I'm on a G plan or an N plan. I would like to switch the plan. And basically what's happening is uh, most people do this because they're changing carriers um, uh, because there's been some kind of a price increase. 
Okay, and so now the standard way in which we switch supplemental plans uh, is we have to go through underwriting. And I'm talking about we've gone beyond our six months and now uh, I would like to move a plan and I may want to move, let's say I'm on an N plan and I want better coverage so I move to a G or I'm on a G plan and I want to move to uh, another G plan. And so typically when we make this kind of move, uh, we're going to have to go through medical underwriting, okay? So what you have to pay attention to is two things if you're contemplating make the switch. Number one, you will obviously look, be looking at initial premium. What's that company offering you? And you're probably motivated to make the switch because somebody out there is, is less expensive, okay? And so that's a good motivator for sure, but don't make a decision just because that other company is offering you an initial lower rate because what matters beyond initial rate is the stability of those premiums. Folks, you gotta realize that all companies, all companies are gonna go up. Uh, they have to, uh, because of medical inflation, it's going to happen. But some companies tend to raise their rates more frequently and more drastically than others. And basically the ones that tend to be less stable are those that have a smaller market share in that area. That area could be the whole state, could be a, you know, a region, but the more policyholders we have in the group that you go into when you buy the seminal plan, uh, the risk is spread out to more policyholders. The result to you is more stable rates. And all I'm trying to teach you is don't be fooled or deceived. Just because a rate is lower doesn't mean it's always going to be lower, right? Because all companies are going to go up. So what I'm looking for is a company that is proven to be very rate stable. Yes, I care about initial rate. If we were switching, we'd like to save some money. But let's also be concerned about three years and five years and 10 years down the road. So what we do as a broker, we're going to look at the stability of all the carriers uh, because most of those report to a database where we can actually track the stability of their rates. And so I'm looking for that company that's proven in the last three, five, seven, 10 years to be very stable because they'll probably continue to be stable in the future. It's because they typically have a, a larger market share. And that's why we typically like your national carriers versus your regional carriers because usually national carriers have more policyholders, risk is spread out more, and they're Therefore, your rates are going to be more stable. All right, so here's my point. In most places, when we make this switch and we're going to switch companies or plan types or whatever, we have to go through underwriting. Now, when we go through underwriting, what that simply means is this. We're going to ask you anywhere from 25 to 30 health questions, which you're, uh, which you're being treated for, or which maybe you've been treated for in the past. So we got these health questions. We also have to check all your medications because you could be on some medication and they actually could possibly uh, uh, deny your application because of that. And that's the whole point of underwriting. The insurance company doesn't have to take you. So we have health questions. Uh, we have prescriptions, and sometimes we have to get what's called an attending physician statement. We got some kind of a statement uh, from your doctor. All right, so these kinds of things, if the insurance company is not comfortable with their findings through the health application, prescriptions, and the statement from the doctor, doctor records, then they, they have the, the right to deny that policy. They don't have to write you. Now, did they have to write you in that six month window? Absolutely, but do they have to now? Absolutely not. All right. And so, and here's what I'm trying to teach you. I want to make sure that uh, you know that if we're going to do underwriting, you don't have to be ready to run a marathon for sure, but you have to have, uh, you know, generally pretty good health. And that's why when you initially buy a supplemental plan, you want to make sure, again, we're paying attention to both things, uh, initial premium, stability of rates. So I'd rather go with a care that may sometimes even be a little bit higher initially, but they've proven in the last five to 10 years to be very stable. That's the kind of care that I really do like, because if I have to go through underwriting, I'm ready to switch. If I can't pass underwriting, then I'm going to be stuck with that carrier that kind of keeps raising the rates more drastically, more frequently. Now, I want to read just quickly a list of you of things that would cause you to be denied an application when you go through underwriting. Lou Gehrig's disease, alcohol or drug abuse, you'd be denied. Alzheimer's, dementia, denied. Uh, COPD, which is chronic obstructive pulmonary uh, disorder. Cystic fibrosis, cirrhosis of the liver. Congestive heart failure, diabetes, uh, if you're insulin dependent, if you take too much insulin, they'll deny you. If you've had any complication with your diabetes, such as retinopathy or neuropathy or a diabetic coma or an amputation, you'll be definitely denied. Um, um, uh, emphysema, uh, end-stage renal disease, fibromyalgia, any kind of a heart disease, stent implants, uh, heart attack in the last few years, those kinds of things, you'll be denied. Uh, hepatitis, any immune disorder, even when someone just has something as, as simple as rheumatoid arthritis or lupus, uh, you'll be denied um, uh, uh, an application. They will not approve it. Uh, kidney disease requiring dialysis, mental or nervous disorders, myasthenia gravis, 
or organ transplants, osteoporosis. And with osteoporosis, sometimes it's osteoporosis uh, with fractures. Sometimes they'll take osteopenia, osteoporosis, as long as there's no complications. With that, just bone density issues. If you've had a stroke, uh, you've been advised, listen to this one, advised by a physician to have a surgery, a medical test or a treatment or a therapy, or you're in the midst of that. Uh, maybe a doc said you need knee replacement or hip replacement or some other kind of uh, surgery. You'll be denied because that is uh, in your future for sure. They'll deny the application. Uh, implantable cardiac defibrillator, if you have that, denied. If you're on oxygen, use a nebulizer, uh, denied. If you have asthma, as long as it's uh, minor, you're all right. But if you use three or more medications, uh, such as inhalers, for your asthma, uh, you would be denied as well. So you can see a lot of these things are not life or death, but they're serious enough where the insurance company says <clears throat> we are not going to approve your application. So that's why we tell people when you take a supplemental plan, be sure you're comfortable with them because you may have them for the rest of your life. And frankly, I have a couple carriers where I think one care I, I've never had a, a, a policy holder ever cancel, want to make the switch whatsoever. Why? Rates are stable. And another, another carrier where I think I've had one client that I'm aware of that actually made the switch. So the point is there are carriers out there that you'd be fine having them for the rest of your life. All right. And so that's how we start. This is how we switch. Now, I do want to talk about and close this out with some special rules that do exist that you need to be aware of. And what this is, this has to do with switching a plan. You're on a plan and what you're actually doing is you're either switching like a G plan to another G plan or you're on a G plan and you want to lower the benefit to an N plan. So, so what we're doing, we're talking about switching like to like or switching like plan to a lesser of a plan. Okay, we can't improve a benefit. And what I'm going to teach you, you couldn't be on an end plan with less benefits and, and upgrade to a G plan. Okay, in this situation here, what I'm saying is that there are some states that allow you to make this move like to like or like to lesser with no underwriting at certain times of the year. All right, I want to clarify this. What this means is they call these birthday rules and there are a few states that allow this now i'm not going to for the sake of time to go into every single state's specific birthday rules but typically the birthday rule will start 30 days before your birthday maybe 30 days after it may start on your birth month and go for the next 60 days maybe the next 90 days every state's a little bit different but what they have in common is when they have a birthday rule they will allow you to move like to like change carriers um, uh, usually, or change plans and stay with the same carrier. So let me explain. So birthday rules uh, right now exist in the state of California, uh, in the state of Oregon, uh, uh, in the state of uh, Idaho, Las, uh, not Las Vegas, Nevada, excuse me, Nevada, um, Illinois, and uh, Louisiana, all right? And so now remember, these four states... Uh, they have different open enrollment periods where you can get policies. I've talked about that. So this just means switching like to like, changing carriers. And so the way it works is in these states here, uh, those states say that you can change uh, uh, like to like and change carriers. Illinois and Louisiana, uh, they allow you to change, but you have to stay with the same carrier. And again, we're doing this because of uh, premium increases and we're trying to get uh, a better rate. Now, Missouri, uh, really, in essence, the same thing, but Missouri actually calls this the anniversary rule. So it's not tied to your birthday, it's tied to your anniversary or policy. So if my policy is effective uh, May, uh, May 1, 30 days before May 1, 30 days after, I can make the switch like to like and change carriers to save money. All right. And then the state of Washington actually allows it as well. And theirs is actually year long. Okay, you can switch them anytime throughout the year. As long as you have a supplemental plan, you can go to a different carrier. All right, so my whole point to you is that there are certain states that will allow uh, you to switch these with no underwriting. Now, in these states, I can switch other times beyond my birthday, other times beyond my anniversary, but now again, I have to go through medical underwriting. All right, so it's very important to note that when we do these kind of things, again, anytime we switch, we're paying attention to the stability of the rates because honestly, the thing that's gonna to matter to you the most is what was that rate gonna look like in three, five, or 10 years down the road? And none of us know for sure, but what we do know, if we'll look at the history of those rates, I think uh, the companies that have been stable will continue to be more stable and offer you uh, those stability of premiums.